For nearly a generation, the Boeing 757 has been the undisputed leader of the mid-market airspace. Right from its introduction, 757 quickly became a jewel in the crown of its maker, drawing immediate enthusiasm from passengers and pilots alike till now. However, everything will be changed. Airbus just revealed new big plan with the Airbus A321 XLR to replace the Boeing 757. Find out in today's episode why Airbus A321 XLR will replace the Boeing 757, what makes a 321 XLR much better, how Boeing reacts to this. A 321 XLR is poised to be the aircraft that will enable 757 to retire, and to understand this transition, we must look back to its roots. So why would Airbus introduce such a model when the 321 LR was already in existence? Going back to basics before any aircraft launch, manufacturers must thoroughly evaluate the plane's prospects. Will it succeed? Will it be financially viable? Among the key considerations is seizing a market with scant competition, a situation that persists even after five years. With Boeing not advancing a middle market airliner, Airbus has a solid foundation to build on. Airbus was confident that they could expand their market share without the need to introduce the speculated A322 or start from scratch. They anticipated that airlines would increasingly turn to them upon recognizing the lack of viable alternatives from Boeing. During the 2019 unveiling of the XLR, many airlines that had been hopeful for a Boeing innovation ultimately placed orders for the XLR. As the anticipated dedicated replacement for the 757 did not materialize, these companies started to seek other options, leading to the rise in prominence of the XLR. The Airbus A321 belonging to the 320 family has served the short to medium range, narrow body, commercial passenger jet sector since 1994. It comes in two variants, the CEO, standing for current engine option, which concluded production in 2021, and the NEO, or new engine option, in production since 2016. The NEO stands out with its efficient engines, extended body and structural improvements, allowing for over 15% more weight capacity, which is over 20,000 pounds at takeoff, and up to 15% fuel savings. These engines are produced by Pratt and & Whitney and also featured in both a 321 LR standing for long range and XLR or extra long range. These two are essentially NEO variants with extended capabilities due to their larger fuel tanks. A 321 LR includes three auxiliary tanks, while the XLR introduces Airbus's ingenious rear center tank, or RCT. The rear center tank alone equals the capacity of three additional center tanks, and there's an option for an extra forward tank to maximize the XLR's range. With the rear center tank, optional forward tank, and an expanded center wing tank, the XLR can cover an impressive 4,700 nautical miles, a remarkable distance for a single-aisle aircraft. Nonetheless, as per reuters, Airbus has concurred with European authorities on alterations to the rear center tank. These changes will increase the aircraft's weight by an additional 800 kilograms, consequently diminishing its range to 4,500 nautical miles, and this is a slight setback for Airbus. Despite this, the aircraft's specifications, including its ability to transport 244 passengers in a single-class layout, render the XLR an almost ideal option for the mid-market segment, which is predominantly occupied by Boeing 757. However, the Boeing 757 which is no longer produced since 2005, is aging, and it must be replaced by modern compliant aircraft. In this case, a 321 XLR is a fitting successor. But first, let's define the middle of the market or MOM aircraft. These aircraft are to fill the niche between massive wide-body aircraft seating up to 800 passengers and smaller narrow-body jets, typically seating fewer than 200 passengers. Middle-of-the-market aircraft, which usually seat 200 to 300 passengers for medium-haul distances, are designed for short runway takeoffs and enough fuel for over 4,500 miles, balancing fuel efficiency and capacity for profitability on lower-demand routes. Middle-of-the-market aircraft are typically deployed on routes that accommodate nearly 200 passengers traveling distances approaching 4,000 miles with minimal stopovers. The demand for aircraft in this category has surged recently, outpacing other aircraft sizes. This spike in demand has underscored the pressing need for airlines to modernize their fleets to cater to passenger preferences. Although Boeing 757s are currently the frontrunners in this market segment, Boeing confronts a significant challenge. The majority of their fleet is over two decades old, leading some 
some carriers to either repurpose these aircraft for cargo or gradually retire them in favor of more contemporary models. This shift opens the door for Airbus's A321 lineup and perhaps more notably, the forthcoming A321 XLR to potentially dominate this market segment, a prospect that becomes clear upon closer examination. While the Airbus A321 XLR is set for release in 2024, with its maiden flight possibly occurring in 2025, the public already has access to most of its specifications, providing insights into its expected performance. This spells potential challenges for Boeing. The conversation begins with fuel efficiency. Although the age of an aircraft is a factor, airlines prioritize efficiency and profitability over age. In this regard, the XLR significantly outperforms the Boeing 757 due to its advanced Pratt & Whitney engines from the renowned GTF series. These engines, identical to those used in the A320neo, are reputed to reduce fuel consumption by 16%, outperforming 757. The XLR's appeal is further enhanced by its environmental credentials, meeting the demands of an eco-conscious era. This is evident in substantial orders from airlines like United and Indigo, the latter placing a record order at the Paris Air Show for 500 Airbus A320 family aircraft, including 69 XLRZ. In size, the Boeing 757 still has an advantage over the 321 XLR. However, the XLRA's slightly wider internal cabin offers additional comfort for passengers. Its range, now at 4,500 nautical miles, exceeds the 757-200 by 600 nautical miles, enabling longer, non-stop flights, much to the delight of airlines. The extended range of the XLR not only provides fuel efficiency but also economic benefits, opening up popular routes beyond 4,000 nautical miles such as Vancouver to Tokyo or London to settle. This potential has airlines excited about the XLR as it enables a variety of medium to long haul all routes. Considering the potential advancements in efficiency of the Airbus A321 XLR in the midsize market, it raises questions about Boeing's strategy to maintain its share in this segment. Boeing has been active yet seemingly ineffective simultaneously. Known for its proactive approach, Boeing's success isn't attributed to complacency. Despite the aging 757S, their reliability has kept them in the ranks of successful aircraft. In the dynamic aviation sector, continuous innovation is crucial for sustained competitiveness. Boeing is well aware of this and has endeavored to address the emerging gap in the mid-market range posed by Airbus's latest models. Although not successful, Boeing's efforts included conceptualizing a new aircraft, 797, in 2015. However, shifting focus to 737 MAX, intended as a competitor to the A321neo, proved problematic due to repeated issues with the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system, resulting in two tragic accidents between 2017 and 2019. The subsequent grounding during the COVID-19 pandemic caused significant financial losses and a lingering trust deficit. However, it is notable that Boeing's plans for the 797 development were halted due to engine unavailability. But, Boeing was said to have engaged in preliminary discussions with Rolls-Royce regarding the integration of the cutting-edge Ultrafan engines into their forthcoming new mid-size airplanes. Initially, Ultrafan's developmental delays suggested that Boeing might opt for a turbofan engine from established manufacturers like General Electric or Pratt & Whitney. However, should Boeing initiate the NMA's development promptly, the Ultrafan, slated for a 2027 debut, emerges as a feasible choice. The engine's technology Technology and design are crucial to the 797's anticipated efficiency and performance, and the Ultrafan has already demonstrated potential in this regard. With a powerful engine option on the horizon, the idea of the 797 is quite possible, but even if Boeing can eventually introduce the 797 to the market, there is still a major hurdle that would make it less appealing than a 321 XLR, and that hurdle is a special certification for pilots to fly it. The Airbus A320 series is already well known, and all the planes in that series use the same certification. This means that pilots can switch from flying one model, like the A319, to another, like the 321 Long Range, with just a simple online course. There are plenty of pilots and training programs ready for the A320 series, but the 797 could be so unique that it would need its own new certification, which could cost airlines a lot to train their pilots. All in all, with no new mid-sized aircraft announced, 
and a focus on the 737 MAX series, Boeing's position in the mid-market is precarious. The industry's demand for mid-market airplanes is growing, and Boeing's inaction could lead to a significant loss of market share to Airbus's A321 series. Boeing's dominance in cargo freight remains, but Airbus's focus on passenger experience could shift the balance. While Boeing's size and market presence may allow for a delayed response, the fast-paced aviation industry waits for no one. Boeing must act swiftly to retain its mid-market position or risk being overtaken by Airbus's newer models. The future of aviation is unfolding, and Boeing's next moves will be critical in determining its role in the mid-market sector. Whether Boeing can stage a comeback or will have to concede to Airbus's ascendancy is a question only time will answer. The clock is ticking, and Boeing's window of opportunity is narrowing. The Boeing 757 used to be a pride of the aircraft manufacturer since it instantly gained so much interest from both passengers and pilots as soon as it was introduced. However, the production of this aircraft lasted only 23 years, much shorter than the predecessor 737 family. In fact, the 737 family is now still in development and production. Despite the newer design and the success story of the 757, Boeing decided to cease the project instead of updating it. So why Boeing dumped the 757? The Boeing 757 is a mid-size, narrow-body twin-engine jet airliner that was designed and introduced as a replacement for the Trijet 727 on short and medium route. The manufacturer initially intended to build the 757 to become a stretched version of the 727 with the same engine configuration, which consisted of three engines. However, due to the oil crisis after the Yom Kippur War and the fact that Airbus had already performed how efficient an airliner with only two engines could be through the wide body, a 300 introduced a few years earlier, the original idea of a stretched variant of the 727 was soon cancelled and Boeing decided to launch the 757 with the 7N7 prototype. It was developed concurrently with the Boeing 767, a wide-body twin jet, and the two shared design features and flight decks which allowed pilots to obtain a common type rating to operate both aircraft. During its production from 1981 to 2004, it became well known for its versatility operating both short and long-haul routes. The aircraft was capable of carrying 200 to 295 passengers and was powered by Rolls-Royce RB211 or Pratt and Whitney PW2000 series engines. It was praised for its fuel efficiency and performance, particularly its ability to take off from short runways, which made it a valuable asset for airlines operating at airports with noise restrictions or in hot and high conditions. Until the 1990s, it was the most produced jet aircraft before the 737 took over. So how come a newer designed aircraft had to witness a downward trend in sales, which then eventually turned into a cessation? There are four major factors that led to the end of the 757 production. The first reason, which is quite obvious, is that airlines stopped ordering the 757. Originally developed in the 1970s, the Boeing 757 was crafted to cater to the hub and spoke travel model prevalent during that era, where major airlines, particularly in the United States and Europe, centralized their operations around large hubs and predominantly rely on wide-body aircraft such as the Boeing 747 to service high-demand, long-haul routes. The design of the 757 did not initially prioritize accommodating low-demand point-to-point travel a role it currently fulfills in modern aviation operations. As the aviation landscape evolved into the early 2000s, Boeing encountered challenges with sluggish sales of the 757. Carriers began reducing capacity on various routes and shifted their focus away from expanding services and investing in lower-capacity long-haul flights. This strategic realignment reflected a broader industry trend where airlines prioritized operational efficiency and revenue optimization in a challenging economic environment. The Boeing 757, originally designed for a different era of air travel, found itself repurposed for point-to-point -point routes catering to niche market segments in the evolving aviation landscape. Of course, the unpredictably long-lasting downturn after September 11 affected aircraft sales of all types, not only the 757, Unfortunately, the 757 sales had already declined significantly by that time, particularly in contrast to the Airbus A320 and the 737 series. 
it would be unbearable for Boeing to maintain the line of a production that was unlikely to receive any further orders. Boeing was already under a lot of pressure at that time. The second reason is about the engines. Some of you might wonder why the lost decade of aviation was over and some demand for the aircraft eventually returned, but Boeing didn't try to apply any improvement on the aircraft, for example, a new engine option. The issue arose from the unique combination of a relatively elongated and sturdy single-aisle airframe paired with exceptionally powerful engines, a characteristic almost exclusive to the Boeing 757. It is called the sports car in the sky for this overpowered engine configuration. Consequently, if Boeing sought a newer, more efficient engine, they would need to persuade an engine manufacturer to either create a completely new design or modify and downsize an existing larger engine. Indeed, both the Rolls-Royce RB211 and the original engine option, Pratt and Whitney Pew 2000, are the shrunken versions of the two initially bigger engine models of the two manufacturers. During this period, General Electric was actually developing the GANX engine for the new 787 design, including a version for the 747-8 with a smaller fan. However, the 757 would have needed an even smaller fan than that one on the 747-8. It would be too risky for both Boeing and GE to pay attention to such a hopeless project while slowing down the 787 engine development. GE and CFM actually then developed a smaller engine drawing heavily from the Ginx, known as the Leap One, currently powering the A320 Neos and the 737 MAX families. Interestingly, the fan diameter of the Leap One Alpha, used in the A320, is nearly identical, albeit slightly larger, than that of the ERB211 utilized in the 757. But even if the engine was introduced in the era of the 757, would it be able to help the 757? The answer is no, because the Leap engine is way less powerful than either of the engine options of the 757. This brings us to the third reason for the eventual demise of the 757. It wasn't just the engines that posed a challenge. The aircraft itself was significantly bulkier and hence much heavier. Comparing it to the A321 highlights this disparity. The maximum payloads of the older 321 and the 757-200 are closely comparable, with the Airbus capable of carrying 25.4 tons or 56,000 pounds, slightly less than the Boeing's capacity of approximately half a ton or 1,100 pounds more. Despite their similar passenger capacities, the two aircraft possess significantly different operating empty weights, resulting in distinct economic considerations. While the 757-200 weighed approximately 58.5 tons or 129,000 pounds empty, the A321 weighed around 48.5 tons or 107,000 pounds, making the Airbus at least 10 tons or 22,000 pounds lighter. This substantial difference primarily stemmed from the 757's design catering not only to hot and high performance, but also a longer range, necessitating the capacity to carry more fuel. Boeing contemplated a shorter variant, the 757-100, during the design phase, retaining the same passenger exit limit as the 757-200. However, given that different variants within the same aircraft family generally share the same wing, it wouldn't have been able to compete effectively with the A321 on similar routes, especially with the weaker engines it would have been equipped with. Consequently, from a commercial standpoint, the A321 appeared to be a more sensible option, and finally, the last point, where Boeing made a strategic decision to continue the production of the 737 rather than the 757. The sustained orders for the 737NG family during this period, in contrast to the declining interest in the 757, made this choice appear as a logical step forward. However, it is unlikely that Boeing's management had long-term plans to maintain the production of the 737 either. Looking at the timelines, Boeing had announced the halt of 757 production in 2003, with the final aircraft rolling off the factory floor in 2004. Before this announcement, Boeing had introduced the revolutionary 787 aircraft, with plans to have it in service as early as 2008, leveraging new design and construction methodologies. With the target service entry of around 2008 in mind back in 2003, Boeing may have reasonably assumed they would introduce their next aircraft model by that time frame. Given that the 737NG family was still in production during this period, 
It is conceivable that this new aircraft would have likely served as a replacement for the 757, drawing extensively from the innovations and designs of the 787. With advancements in techniques and the use of lighter materials, Boeing aimed to adapt this cutting-edge design to capture a portion of the 737 market segment, ensuring scalability and market relevance.